the first episode of Architects Narrative and today we are going to speak about uh, future cities, the growing population and the problems and challenges we are facing today and what can be the most best solutions for them. Today we have the experts from TIPSA. Uh, I'm going to let them introduce themselves one by one. I am Manuel Lucena, the project manager in the supervision work in the Aliman University in Riyadh. I'm ready to answer any question. My name is David Fernandez. Uh, I am the head of the department, design department uh, in TIPSA Middle East. And I am an architect, of course. And well, we are just developing some projects now and some more in the future, we hope so. I am Javier Sainz. I am architect too. Have been working for more than 30 years in Spain and now I am in Riyadh for the last three years working in our Iman University project. Uh, right now we are facing a lot of issues in a lot of metropolitan cities. The growing population is, uh, uh, has been increasing from 1980s. We have seen more than 50% uh, of the rural areas population transferring themselves to the urban areas. Now it is projected that over 68% will be living in uh, urban cities by 2050. What do you have to say about that? We are crazy. Well, I think that now we need to create more sustainable cities in general, in the developed countries at least, because there are many different situations around the world. I mean, it's not only in the developed countries, also in underdeveloped countries where the situation is completely different. So I think there is not a unique solution for these cities. Uh, but basically, we need to be conscious of the social balance and at the same time, through wise master planning, and eco-friendly solutions that are, is the future probably. We need to uh, take care of the, of the future of our kids and the future of our cities. I am very concerned because of the size of the, of the cities. There are more than 500 cities with more than 1 million people inside. Tokyo is the biggest city in the world. It's around 38 million people. We have uh, around uh, 10 cities over 20 million people. I think there will be a uh, optimum size for the, for the cities. We need the balance between pop population, utilities, transportation, and bello uh, um, environment. And that is the, the challenge we are facing. So you guys are talking about the sustainable cities that are going to be our future and what solutions it can bring to the society. But when we are talking about the urban spoils that are going everywhere, the copy-paste uh, architecture that is going on, do you think they are going to solve any of the problems? Or is it going to create more issues right now? Yes, I agree with you. It is going to create more problems. The problem is not architectural problem. It's the way of you. We need to change our mind. So the mindset right now needs to be changed. And how can we do that? Well, I think the uh, first step is to change the mind of the society. Because some people think that the cities modify the way you live uh, in, in the society. But my point is just the opposite. Uh, first, you need to change the mentality of the society. And then, in that moment, architects, but not only architects, I mean, it's a sort of transversal uh, change or the challenge. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's uh, every single profession, every single uh, people involved in the, in the society has the responsibility. So no, it's not about architects. It's not about uh, just a nice master plan could be very beautiful master plan and doesn't work because the society is not prepared for that. So it's a combination of factors, but basically you have to work first in the education of the society. Okay. I think it's not a matter of architecture, of formal solutions. I think 
The cities are reflecting the society along the history. And now the society is changing. The nuclear family is changing also. Some kinds of um, living are changing. And architecture and the cities, the cities planning should be facing that, that change. And they, they have the, to give the answer to the change in the society. So I think you're referring to the modern nomads of uh, the society right now. Yeah. Okay. You, you, you want to add something on that? No. And just to say the same again. Okay. It is the way of living is not a technical question. Okay. It is a mental question. So how do you think we can improve the education of uh, the society in, in this matter of living, in the aspect of uh, sustainability, in the aspect of future cities? How do you think we can improve on that? I believe that there is no improvement. If everybody wants if everybody want to have all the facilities that we are now used to have at home, I mean, cable TV, internet, uh, music, everything, then the improvement is, there is no way for the improvement. Because every time, you know, the, the IT, the IT technologies, they are progressing. Every day, not every day, every day. Yeah. Then every day we will need more and more. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with Manuel, and, and, I, and, and I would like to add something that it's true that the, through the extreme consumption of new technology, uh, the world is advancing, but at the same time, we are producing uh, more trash. Yes. And we are producing obsolete things that uh, after five years we need to buy a new iPhone, a new computer. And this is an environmental problem at the end of the day because, I mean, we need resources from other countries to create this uh, new technology. So, uh, on the one hand, it's, uh, it's very good to investigation and research to improve materials, uh, ways of construction, technology. But on the other hand, we are uh, attacking our own world, our, uh, the, the earth, because of the vast pollution. quantity of uh, yeah, pollution that we are producing. So the balance of all of this is what we need just to do the future of cities that is wise and at the same time sustainable. And I think this is not easy at all because uh, we all want the latest things and the fastest thing as possible. So this is so a you're, problem. So you're telling that uh, when technology is helping build smart cities, it's also creating the problem exactly. that where exactly. we need the smart cities yeah, to work. Yeah, exactly. But the problem is lies itself in technology, the unsustainable technology that we are having today. That's the, that's the point. That's the point. Shavio, what do you want to add on that? Yeah, I, I, I want to to say that I think new typologies in, in housing should be designed. Uh, the architecture has no response to, to the change of the cities and the growing. I think the, the only response has, be, has been from the market. The market is looking for a more cost-effective solutions, and it consists in the houses are bigger, uh, smaller than before. So we had to to reduce a lot our belongings. We are uh, the density of the cities is growing a lot, and this is uh, making a lot of problems. Yeah, and also related with the public transportation and the urban development. So new te technology, for example, in vacation, there are new concepts like time sharing that allows the people to have more cost-effective solutions. You share the property for a time. 
So th I think this is a very, very innovative solution, but it's only applied to, to vacations till now. I think in the future for the housing uh, will be some typology, some kind of, I don't know properties because with the mobility probably the renting will be the, the solution. But uh, sharing is, is the fashion, you know. Yes. And I think in this way we had to work. Okay, with the new Airbnb solutions you are talking about, these yeah. solutions where we are now. Uh, also for, for, for Uber, for the cars, for a lot yeah. of uh, not only housing, yes, mobility. Yeah, we had to share. Uh, if not, uh, there is no limit for the growing. Yeah. I, 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 I have heard an example regarding this that they, they don't want to sell any more bicycles in Africa because they think this is uh, a symbol of poverty hmm. and uh, actually this is the more sustainable as you can see in Sc uh, Scandinavian countries they have yeah. been adapting bicycles yeah. <clears throat> as a sign of future cities and sustainable yeah. cities whereas in Africa they think this is a sign of poverty. I think this is also a lack of education and lack of concepts and awareness of the no, it's a, it is of our a culture difference. There are, all the cities are not the same. Mm -hmm. Every city is responding to the, uh, his culture. Yes. And th that is a good example. For example, in Africa, a bicycle could be a symbol of poverty in the Netherlands, in the Scandinavian, now even in Madrid, people is using bicycle yeah. for I think, I mo think. more or less. Yeah. <laughs> remember, remember what happened now in Spain. It's very dangerous because we are not used <laughs> to, to that. No, no I know. To that, no to that. The people, the people living in the country, outside of the big city, yeah. they are asking now in order to have to develop all the infrastructure to move the industries to the, the small towns and whatever, because if not, the small town will be empty in five yeah, yeah, years, yeah, no yeah. more. Yeah. This is why I, I talk about the size of the cities, because I think there is a, a critical size. From this size, you had to go to a new town. In China, they are working on new towns from the beginning. Uh, before coming here, I was working in a, a international competition for the design of a new center town in China. They are creating small cities um, a, a, around a, um, a special life motive. In this case was Moeva was like a special garden, something with tourism interest, you know? Yeah. And, and, and this could be the solution. I remember a long time ago in Britain, they, they are working on new towns. Mm -hmm. You have heard about mm -hmm. yeah, the yes. new towns in yeah. the 60s. Yeah. That's so, what happened now. Yeah. In the 60s, it could be a very good solution. But today, in the 21st century, what happened? Yeah, no, I think in general, I mean, those, those cities that were created in the 60s uh, were a little utopic. I mean, there was from scratch, they created the city, it was a master planning, but it was not related to the society at all. I mean, but it the was trend is still continuous, right? If we see China, if we see South Korea, the Sengdong is one of the new emerging cities. Mm -hmm. It's totally sustainable. Yeah. Using the latest technology that we, uh, which was unsustainable in wrong hands, yeah. they're making it more sustainable. The energy is reused, uh, the trash is recycled. Everything is happening in a systematic way. Of course, we need educated population. Yeah, we need exactly. proper systems to be followed uh, from scratch, as he, as Mr. Javier was saying. We need to create it from scratch. Yeah. But what about the metropolitan cities? What we have right now, like uh, the problems that are concerning concerning to you right now. What do you think happened there? What was the problem 
that happened. In the cities you have mentioned, in UK and in Spain, in the 60s. I don't know the problem. I don't know the original problem. Uh -huh. You don't know the original problem, how, why they created this issue? What I am trying to say is the solution will be a temporary solution. Mm -hmm. Because after that, the city will be developed and then it will become to be a very big city mm -hmm. with the problem of the big city or will be a nice successful city. Then we will be a Then the solution is just a temporary solution. Yeah. For 30 years, 30 years, no more. I think there is a clear evolution in the old cities, I mean, in the cities with history, that <clears throat> are based in, the, in some original idea, I mean, original uh, telling about the origin, mm -hmm. that is to create a, a town center that is basically pedestrian, uh, easy for uh, people to live, to share, to uh, have new activities. In Madrid, for instance, uh, I read a, a, an article some months ago, uh, because now, you know, the center of Madrid, it's going to be uh, banned for private cars and, and it's going to be reduced, the traffic inside, mm -hmm. what I think is fantastic. But there is, there are a lot of people that is against this uh, solution because they think that uh, the, I mean, the, the general commerce is going to be worse, uh, the activities, interaction is going to be worse. Uh, however, some 30, 40 years ago happened the same with the big park in the center that was uh, uh, crossed by cars and the Retiro, it's called. And it was so dramatic when they decided to uh, ban cars inside. And it's much better now. Yeah. And the same happened with another streets that are now pedestrian, uh, like Callao, that is a main street in Madrid. Uh, the commerce, the shops, the big malls are going to be yeah. a disaster. And at the end, it's just the opposite, because people, when walks, spend more time in the area as far as you have a good public transport. And this is the secret also. If you don't have it, then yeah, it's but, bad. Yeah, but, but uh, I think that the center, the center town is becoming the soul center, mm. because it's a train, all the tourism, all the shopping. Yeah. So the people living there has a lot of problems right now yeah probably people Be because will go outside <laughs> it's going outside yeah. around the because center the more expensive the, the, area, now. the more expensive yeah. area of the center town but in the town yeah, yeah okay insisting in the same the same idea the downtown of the city are all of them built uh -huh. there, is, there is no empty spaces yeah, yeah. The, the downtown of the city is kind of so a certain number of people yeah yeah say, Four million. See, this, Four million there is a size. It's and clear. What in ten years. Yeah. yeah. When there are no four million, but eight. There is no space for them. Uh, the problem uh, is, I, I, I yeah. think the problem could be more an economical problem. If you create some focus with industrial areas and so, people looking for work will be there. Uh, not in the old city. Yeah. Then, then that, that's the, the problem. Idea, the idea is to avoid everybody to go to the same town. Yeah. yeah, and I think this yeah. is the solution of the modern cities, or, or one of the solutions of the modern cities is to create a, a network of centers outside the center. So when you have yeah. several centers with mixed use, commerce, offices, residence, you don't need to go to the center. Yeah. You can go, but you don't need because you have one center close to your neighborhood. Yeah, so you this have, is the way how, uh, I mean, and, and, and also can balance better the, yeah, the equality of, between But you society. have a multi-purpose city. Yeah. Not that before. Exactly. Do you remember yeah. the dormit uh, bedroom cities yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. around yeah, exactly. Madrid? Like People sprawls, uh, go we were talking before, to yeah. His city yeah, only for the sleeping computer, and, then you and come back the to Madrid yeah, for exactly. working. I think that's what is happening so. in Dubai and Sharjah, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Sharjah people are going yeah, yeah, in them. Yeah. Yeah. But I think your solution has, is being applied in Riyadh. If you see, there are many, many cities like uh, there is IT city, there is telecom city, and yeah. there is uh, uh, hospital and other areas, medical cities. So these kind of cities are being divided. 
Yeah. But rather, I think this is being to the point rather than multi-purpose. Yeah, but I think in this case, uh, I think it's not exactly what I am saying 100% because it's uh, specializing cities in each of these areas, no? mm -hmm. the medical center area, the IT area, and this creates a sort of segregation yeah. by yeah. professions. So this is, is, is good, it's not a bad solution, but it's not the best. The best is when you can mix and you can have whatever you need. I mean, if you are an architect, you don't need to go uh, 30 kilometers to the architect's city <laughs> because otherwise you have the same problem at going. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or all the architects are living together, what is a nightmare. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. so better mixed uh, with all the professions and jobs. Mm -hmm. and so I think that... <laughs> yeah, exactly. With everybody was working and I th yeah. a different group. And I think mm -hmm. the mentality here in Saudi Arabia is a little like that because it still is related to a trade way of living mm -hmm. that is in the Muslim countries is like that. No, you, you go to buy a phone, uh, an iPhone, and you go to the street where all the... Uh, yeah, yeah, that kind of yeah, you know, it's, it's something related to, to your culture. So it's okay because it's related to your, country, to your culture, but at the same time, maybe cannot solve all of the problems that are in the society when anyone can choose whatever they want to do. So. Coming back to the point you were speaking about the materials that we can use. So what do you think the materials, how would they have developed? Like in the 19th century it was stone and iron, now it is glass and aluminium. What do you think? Well, I, I think now the materials, the materials, the there are a lot of innovative materials. I think the future is for composite materials. Uh -huh. Composite materials uh, that uh, will be projected in order to their qualities. Okay. More, more or less tailored materials. For one need, one new material mm -hmm. specified for this need. And now, in so the you're, in you're the talking about tailored materials for a specific purpose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather than general materials. No, 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 no. Very, very specific materials for. Won't be that? Won't that make it very expensive? Mm. Well, we know by now. Could be, could be or not. I don't know, but it's clear that there, there are a lot of investigation in new materials. Mm -hmm. Now uh, there is a degree specific for materials yes. in the School yes. of Engineering. Mm -hmm. And it's the, the, the state of the art of, of the materials there. I think that there is a, I don't know, a clear path of uh, the mixing of uh, different uh, disciplines mm -hmm. uh, and also in construction. It's like in medicine, no? that they are like bioengineers, no? that yes. they mix the body with uh, another parts and, and more and more uh, exactly. you can put uh, some incredible devices. And I think in construction will be the same. Most probably chemistry and biology will mix with, uh, with some materials just to self-healing. Uh, for instance, concrete, I read about some self-healing concrete that have some bacteria that uh, you mix with this concrete and if you have cracks, automatically repair. So I think this sounds like science fiction, but I'm sure that will be like that. I'm sh completely sure. I don't know if in 10 years, 20, or, or I don't know, some uh, structural uh, materials that are made of biological elements like algae or the exoskeleton of some uh, crustaceous. I'm sure that it will go in that direction. Maybe at the beginning it will be very expensive or very difficult to find. But I think this is something that we are not thinking uh, a lot about. Regarding it. your point, I paid a visit three or four years ago to the faculty, to the faculty of engineering in Madrid, mm -hmm. and they were uh, working on the spider nets. The? Spider nets. Yeah. They, they have in the laboratory a lot of spiders making nets yeah. and they were working on the fiber of these nets for um, Kevlar. Uh, Kevlar. Kev yeah, yeah. Yes. for Kevlar. Yeah. And yeah. I was atonized because 
think this is the future. Yeah, yeah, right now, I think even for the future cities that we are going to have uh, very soon, is uh, adapting to biomimicry and biotechnology that exactly. is uh, being researched yeah, yeah, yeah. and investigated yes. uh, from quite a while, I guess, no? From a couple of years, yeah. I have been seeing a lot of biological designs yeah. that are mimicking the, the actual designs from uh, bees and ants uh, and many other animals. Yeah. Yeah. And I have seen them very successful in the current situation that we have. Yeah. Yeah. So I think maybe adapting and educating people more about biomimicry and biodesign, yeah. we can actually attain uh, sustainable cities. I don't think so. Uh, what do you think? Uh, wh <laughs> what will be the problem? I think, I think it is not based in biology. I think it is based in organic chemistry. I mean, okay. graphene. For example. The material of the mm -hmm. But it is not a, it is not a, a living item. It is dead, I mean, it is organic, but dead. Okay. It's not an alive item. But it is very strong, very flexible, it's really very useful for everything. For the structure, for the facade, for everything. It seems like what you're referring is to the, the, the trend or the, the race between the tallest building that is going on right now. Rather than the tallest, now we are fighting in the longest uh, with uh, the Dubai frame and everything. We are, we are not talking about the longest building that we are going to have. Yeah. Yeah? So maybe in that technology can help us build this. Uh... I think that the future will not be the skyscraper. Not at all. How do you think? Yeah. Um, pillars. For yeah. sure. Pillars. And the, 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 the city. We forget the downtown, and then the, 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 the city will be spread. Same material. Mm -hmm. is a huge city. Yeah, it's massive. But, yes, but with a very low height of the city. They are villas. For I, me, this I, is I, the, the anti-city. Yeah. <laughs> I am I think the complete opposite, opposite yeah, to exactly. this kind of suburban areas. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the city the center. With there you will find completely downtowns or small cities and only in metropolitan cities you will see a skyline actually yeah. happening but in rest of the places it's just uh, urban spots but, but I two three yeah. stories that's it but i think this can happen in in new cities or in countries where you have a lot of space uh, in europe for instance that is with the density is quite huge i think this is anti-ecological because you are occupying much more area, producing much more uh, trash. I mean, it's, it's, I, I think it's much wiser to have the density concentrated mm -hmm. because the footprint of the city will be much less and, and, and the resources can be managed uh, easier because you don't need to have huge conductions, piping, drainage, sewage. Uh, the, public yeah, I mean, tra the public transportation, because the public tra transportation doesn't work in low densities. Yeah. It's impossible, it's impossible. You need because it's, the cost affection is too high. I think that's what happened in Tokyo, you know, because of the constraint in space. Yeah. They built all these towers, yeah. and now they, are, they have a new concept of tiny homes yeah. and tiny houses. They are, they are building like IKEA stores, no? Small, small, small. But, yeah, yeah, and I yeah, think yeah, it's yeah. also the future because really we don't need so much space for, for the houses. Yeah. We don't use the space of the houses. Exactly. Really. We are not living we, we need in a the bed. office half of the time. I mean, you are, most of the day you are outside in the work, I mean, enjoying yourself in a multi-center. So why the houses are so big if you don't need this space at all? You don't need the space at all. I mean, maybe, really. Maybe the... Japanese style of life. No, maybe, and maybe, maybe this is maybe this is too much. <laughs> maybe this is too much. Uh, but I think there is something in between, and, and I think little by little we will live in smaller houses. But they, they, they live the in an island, and the space for them is a limited yeah. space. I think this is the the problem yeah. of their mentality. Yeah. See that most of the biggest of the largest cities in the world are in the oriental area. 
China. are in the China. east. Yeah. In India, China, Japan, uh, Korea, Indonesia, mm. all the, 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 yeah. the biggest cities in the world no, are in this area. Referring to the comment just you made, uh, now we can see a global trend. I think you will agree with it that Asia is now getting overpopulated, whereas Europe is getting uh, less and less. The population is decreasing all over Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? How the, the construction is going to change here and the design or perspective is going to change in Europe? How do you think that will differ? Culturally, they are already different. Uh, building wise, design wise, they are already different. But what do you think the future of these two cities? Like a Madrid, for example, to that of Beijing or something. Yeah, I think it's completely different. Uh, I think now we are, yeah, we are reducing the population, but at the same time, we are reducing the population in Spain as a country, but not in the cities. I mean, in Madrid, as Manuel said before, there are a lot of uh, villages uh, in the provinces that are around Madrid that are empty or almost mm -hmm. empty. So people are moving to, to the mega capital, cities. to the mega cities. And I understand, boy, I mean, it's a shame that uh, the villages are empty, but at the same time, in a city is what happened. Uh, most of the activity, you can uh, thrive in, in your job more, you can have better salary. It's true that is, everything is more expensive. So at the end of the day, but I don't know, uh, through through the publicity, through the adverts, through everything, everything is pushing you to, the, to live in a city. And there are pros and cons. So I think in Madrid, it's a historical city, most probably will happen that, that the center will be, will be no residential at all, just as he said, commercial, offices, etc. and people will live Madrid, around the city. Madrid is finished now. Madrid is finished. Madrid, Madrid can't yeah. grow in his territory. Mm -hmm. it, sh it, should, it will absorb yes. all the surroundings, but the territory of Madrid is full. It's finished. Yeah, we are absorbing other cities around that are big enough. So instead of, I don't know, Madrid is four million, five million? Six million. Six million, Six counting, million now. counting the other uh, The metropolitan towns, area. Yeah. So this is because we are eating the areas around Madrid, but each of these areas uh, really have their own town centers. So most of the people or some of the people can live in this area without m moving to Madrid or without going to Madrid in weeks if they want. But always the metropoli has an attraction for people. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, there is this movement going to the city at least during the weekends and going out. So this creates a lot of traffic problems, although the public system For, for me, the, the sample of the city is a mid-sized European city. Amsterdam. Most of them, for Amsterdam example, is a good sample. most of them has solved the public transportation. There is no problem with that. And they, they are friendly pedestrian areas, and the people is living there it, all the you have all the uses inside the in the, in the city. You don't have to go out for for nothing. Everything is mixed. But this is working with the European culture. See, the, the street, the square, are the space for the public re relationships, and this is, this is working from the Greeks till now. In, in European yeah. cities, and that that's the, the city I I like. Yes, I think America, for instance, has a completely different approach because it was a new country. Uh, all the colons uh, came uh, in 200 years. They have to create everything from scratch, so they could plan uh, something reticular. And it's what happened here, it's, it's, it's the same. So it's not that something that happened through centuries and centuries and centuries. It, it didn't grow organically rather yeah, than on yeah. the grid. Yeah, exactly. It's completely different. So they started with a plan and they follow the plan and they can follow the plan because it was empty at the beginning. And you can go now to any American big city. 
Sí. Giant Boy there. We are running away. Because they are cheating. Huge cheating. They don't time not just for working. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to pay a visit to a firm, maybe you need one hour and a half drive. Right? Yeah. Because they are in the other edge of the city. Yeah. And the cities are enormous. So because yeah. it's the culture of the car, like here. Yeah. This is one of the challenges of uh, Riyadh now, no? You're going to build a public uh, transport system that is going to be fantastic, at least uh, as far as I know. But the mentality has to change a lot, because otherwise, uh, if you are going to continue using the car, uh, this is not going to be solved. Uh, I don't know, I, th I think that takes time, but I, I'm sure that when you discover a good public uh, transport system. Yeah, the, the, the problem is here, for example, see the, the metro in Madrid, in London, in Paris, is a very big net with a very small distance in between two stations. Yeah. So you can walk from one station to the next one yeah. without any problem. All the, the city center is uh, served by the metro and bus. But here we have six lines only. The distance in between two stations is a huge distance, yes. like Dubai, for example. And you can walk, you can't walk. You need, you need the car system. You, you, you well, need but the metro and the car system and bus no, system but the, and so. But the so it's not going to solve. The metro here in Riyadh is going along with the new bus system. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it's not to avoid yeah. the private car. Yeah, and it's a very good system. I saw the system of bus and, and it's, it covers the whole city because there are three different uh, faces, three different types of buses. And with that, if it works well, I mean, you can go wherever without taking the car. And in fact, I was in a meeting with the uh, Riyadh Development Authority just uh, one week and a half ago. We presented a project that we are working on just to see if we are lucky. And, and the, uh, the position of uh, Riyadh Development Authority is to reduce the lanes for cars in the next uh, 10, 15 years to avoid people to take the car. I mean, in addition of the public system of transport. I mean, without that, you cannot do it. But for instance, Bin Mekrin, uh, the new Mohammed bin Salman road, uh, is going to have only two lanes for each direction because it's going to be a, a sport uh, boulevard. And they want to do this with most of the streets, except for the big arteries, to reduce the traffic. And yeah. to reduce the traffic, and make, make, it dif right make it difficult and make it easy, the public transport. This is. Mm -hmm and change the mentality. So this will take time, and for sure it at the beginning there will time. be traffic. Yeah. Yeah. When we are talking about mentality, I'm also seeing this kind of trend, you know, copy-paste trend, which I was talking in the beginning, that uh, right now, if any concrete structure that we are see seeing in any city, any megapolitan city, we can see the same building copy-pasted in another city. Mm -hmm. We have this right now. Mm -hmm. This is, a, one is very generic. Second is losing its culture. The yeah. city is losing yeah. its uniqueness, right? Having the same glass facade buildings. For example, in Riyadh, we have the turning building. I think the turning building is in Russia, in Istanbul, in uh, Dubai. In Dubai. Yeah. Many countries, the same building. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that it's, it's not easy because, on the one hand, the, 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 the world is global now. Mm -hmm. So you can say, okay, and, and you have the same iPhone that in Singapore and in, in Madrid and in America. Oh, but I like it. So <laughs> <laughs> the same with the buildings. On the other hand, of course, you want to keep your own culture. But how to balance this? Most of the times you have a, an area where you have buildings that are totally international and other areas that keeps the culture and, and these traditions and make your city different. But it's not to choose this or that. I think we can mix. We can live with soup and with an iPhone, and we can live with a jacket and iPhone. I mean, there's many different the options. Yeah, exactly. I think this is good for society. And don't forget the investor. Yeah. With no investor, there is no new building. Exactly. Yeah. Don't forget that. 
No, the investor is the most important <laughs> person but, but, but for I building. Think that being, for making, of course, making our cities more commercialized is what make, what is giving us uh, the unsus unsustainability of the city itself. Making it more commercial makes it cheap. They want to buy cheap materials. They want to design it cheaply, not thinking about how it will be run. For example, uh, higher concentration of glass makes it more hot. You are using lots of energy to cool that building or warm yeah. that building up. Yeah. And yeah. this kind of unsustainable challenges or, or issues that are created by being commercial cannot be solved later on. Yeah, but I think this trend is changing. I mean, I think people, as uh, Manuel said before, that before was uh, who is going to do the higher uh, skyscraper. Now I think the trend is that who is going to do the more environmentally friendly building. Mm -hmm. no, it's like, uh, my building is a gold lead uh, awarded. Or I, I think this is a new trend, and what is good. So I think people will take more That's care, yeah. but maybe just for some iconic buildings, and still there is a lot of things to do to change for the typical residential buildings that still is something that a contractor do for uh, earning yeah, money. Actually, uh, having that certificate is actually growing the commercial value of a building, yeah. not just making it sustainable, but yeah. making it more exactly. uh, economically wise to an investor, as you said. <laughs> so, at, at the end, uh, if, I, if we want to conclude, what is your take on the future cities? Uh, what do you think is going to happen? And how is it going to turn out? I don't know what is going to happen. But I think <laughs> the quality of life is slowly going down. And I think that the people will change their mind and then they will forget the big cities. But I don't know what is going to happen. This is my idea. My idea... There was a movie regarding that. <laughs> that the New York City was a desert, not a desert. But it was something which was... Destroyed. Yes, destroyed, demolished and whatever. And then this is what I think that is going to happen with the big cities. Because the people will prefer to have a bigger quality of life with themselves that to follow living in a very crowded city, spending all time moving from one to another. From my point, I think that uh, there are probably three different speed in the in the cities because there are different cities. Uh, so in the developed countries, I think that the trend is to come back to the basic. I mean, uh, we want to enjoy life, the quality of life, to be greener, to be environmentally friendly. So for that, we will reduce the traffic, uh, we will do everything pedestrian, uh, and, and the quality of life will improve. This is what I think will happen in, in Europe, in, countries in Asia, here maybe, in other countries that are, uh, I mean, maybe 20 years or 25 years uh, behind, uh, still now uh, they are looking for something more iconic, something more impressive, something more attractive for people from other sides to come. Uh, maybe this is the case of uh, Riyadh in this case, no? still you are creating something astonishing uh, this is the first step, you know, to track people, and then the next step is just connection uh, people to change their mentality. And then in the underdeveloped under countries, uh, I think basically is to be socially more stable with the infrastructures, basic infrastructures for all of them, reachable, affordable, what is now not possible. So I think these are the three types of, of cities and the future for this these three types of, of cities, from my point of view. I agree with you completely. In Europe is out of the championship for the highest tower now. Yeah. That's only in Middle East and Asia, I think. Yeah. Because they are 
trying to uh, exceed. exceed, exceed. That's that's the point. And there are two two visions of the cities, of the architecture, of everything. One going back to the nature and the basic needs, and the other one looking for the success, the 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 speed, and so. Okay. Uh, so, in conclusion, we can say that even being commercial, and even being commercial, we can be more sustainable. Sure. And uh, taking the path of uh, educated mind and mindset of such, we can actually achieve sustainable cities, and our future cities will be better at some point. Yeah, I think we we must try at least to do that. I mean, anyway, I think the humankind is improving, always improving. Yeah, I agree.